Hey, you made your way back to 20 minutes or less. I'm Joe Beretta. I'm Ellie Morgan. Open the door, get on the floor. Everybody walk that dinosaur. We're gonna talk about cloning extinct species right now. And we get it, this is a very heavy subject. The discussion of cloning is a moral roller coaster with a bunch of ups and downs, a lot of screaming, and an ending full of red-faced, breathless people staggering off in different directions. You can't do it! Like that guy. But look, dude, we're the last dinosaurs walking the planet and we'd like to ensure the continuation of our species. Cloning just might be the answer. And we're not the only ones that could benefit from a resurrection. The awesome animal lovers over at the Mother Nature Network have broken down 14 different extinct species that could benefit from a little bit of cloning. You know, in like a, oh, I was dead and now I'm not dead anymore more kind of benefit. First up is the woolly mammoth, and it seems like this hairy elephant always comes up when cloning is discussed. And for good reason. First of all, all sorts of intact specimens have been extracted from the ice, and today's elephants are so closely related to mammoths that scientists could utilize an elephant to give birth to a mammoth. Which would be so frightening for the unsuspecting elephant mother. I mean, she'd get over it and learn to love her different baby, but she would instantly become the talk of the small-knit suburban elephant community. Did you hear about Linda? Tell me about Linda. Who's Linda? Oh, Linda's the one down the street. She gave birth to that hairy monster. I don't know what this elephant world is. Is coming to. Who is that baby's daddy? I don't know. Anyways, mammoths could end up being a real thing sooner than you think because Japanese scientists are looking to resurrect them in the next five years. The most widely known extinct animal is probably the dodo, and that's another candidate that could stage an epic comeback. Humans drove the bird to extinction just 80 years after stumbling upon him, and the bird was unfairly named the dodo because it would walk right up to club wielding Homo sapiens. Hey, what you got there? Hey, what is that? Where are you going? What you carrying there? Is that a snack? Is that food? You want me to sit on that? Sit in your hand? Could I perch on that? Hey, you're my dad. You guys are big. In fairness, the bird wasn't really stupid, it just lived in isolation, so it wasn't used to all these two-legged creatures walking around. They are a good candidate for cloning because DNA samples are currently in museums and they're closely related to the pigeon. Let's talk about the ground sloth. Joe, let's. Look at the size of this thing. It's like the hummer of extinct species. These guys walked the earth as early as 8,000 years ago and intact hair samples offer a DNA smorgasbord. Finding a surrogate parent, though, is next to impossible because their closest relative is the three-toed sloth and their bodies would be ripped asunder by the giant baby growing inside of them. But someday it's feasible that a giant womb could be constructed somehow in a lab, and then we'd have a bunch of celebrities running around with ground sloths, and Kristen Bell would never stop crying. Also discussed were the Carolina parakeet, the Moa saber-toothed cats, the Pyrenean ibex, the Tasmanian tiger, also known as the Tasmanian wolf, the Huya, the Baiji river dolphin, the Irish elk, the passenger pigeon, the woolly rhinoceros, oh, and a Neanderthal. And we all know that cloning a Neanderthal would be a great idea because of the scientific research paper that was Encino Man. And just in case you think this cloning of extinct species thing is impossible, well, guess what? It's happened once before. Pyrenean ibex actually became the first extinct species to ever be cloned, but died seven minutes after birth due to a lung defect. So there's two sides to this. One side is, yes, it would be amazing to see all of these animals roaming the earth again. The other side of it is like, hey, aren't we kind of playing God? These species are gone for a reason. Who are we to change that? But in a lot of cases, we are the reason they're extinct. So wouldn't it kind of be our responsibility to bring them back if the opportunity presented itself? No. But if we did bring them back from non-existence, could we replicate their natural habitat? Probably. Is it moral or fair to bring them back just to throw them in a zoo or in a lab? Definitely not. All I know is I want to be able to proudly walk my ground sloth up and down the block. By the way, neighborhood association, I don't believe in carbon my pet, deal with it. And just because it's interesting, follow the link in the description down below to a Wikipedia page listing all the different animal species that we've already cloned. Spoiler alert, it's 22. What are your thoughts on the morality of cloning animals? Should we continue to do it or should we not do it ever again and not even try? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section right down there. And then stock the like button, feast on the subscribe button, then hit this annotation or go to sourcefed.com for the five dino stories of the day or any dino story that we've ever covered here at SourceFed. I'm Joe Beretta. I'm Elliot Morgan. We walked a dinosaur! Yeah, we rocked a dinosaur! <laughs>